you're a, a walking ad today. I know. Oh yeah, what, is that merch? This is yeah, this is the thing. This <laughs> yeah, is you have rolling right now. Go that's ahead. all I wear is my own merch, <laughs> and it feels There's nothing else. It look, yeah. but that's how you know you like it. Yeah, exactly. That you would wear I make it yourself. It for myself, you know. What do you mean? There's nothing. Else? You have plenty of stuff in your. I don't like that closet. stuff, man. <laughs> the stuff I want to work make. for a clothing company. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not into it. <laughs> well, ex please explain. What's, what's well? I, I made it, and I'm gonna release it soon. There's nothing. There's not like a a story. You know. Did you you design this? No, 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 no. no, no. My buddy did. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Were you knitting as well? Is that no, what you have? No, there's no injury? like inspo story. You know, like you have uh, child labor. That's <laughs> no, no. It's like a <laughs> local screen print shop in Los Angeles. A uh, couple of cool dudes. When is this coming out? I'm not gonna say shit. Stop talking about <laughs> it. I wanted to wear it. All right, ladies. You know what? I'm, gonna, gonna... I'm gonna change. <laughs> I like uh, it. Can no, I wear that? Put my jacket on. No. <laughs> you made me feel weird. I would. I'm no, trying to help you. No, we're sorry, Grace. I'm putting my jacket on. No. Uh, you guys aren't being too cool, dudes. You promised me two cool dudes over here. I thought here. we were cool. <laughs> We're being cool. <laughs> this is our first big guest on our new channel. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Whoa, this is cool. Yeah. What jacket is this? Well, did you make this? No. <laughs> <laughs>have grace helbig on the new Woo! channel today yeah yeah grace helbig podcast host actress author uh legend comedian yep uh cancer survivor yeah! lady. Oh, that's the big one that's a new one to add to the list yeah there's a whole bunch of that's stuff. so exciting is that the top right now or is it uh, it is you know what when you get cancer it becomes a big part of your world yep, so it, it does become are. a bit of a priority yeah. it does make it to the top of the list congrats to you thank you and you too <laughs> thank you so much i'm yes. in your club now yeah you are you're well you're fresher off of it so yeah i you. think i'm and brighter eyed bushier tailed yes. and but i think that'll wear off soon very nice wow well yeah. we just wanted to touch on some some stuff on our new channel first of all yeah right. so Congrats. we thank you yeah so we did have 57k subs right they were dead old. yeah yeah so what's explain this to me what yeah. happened oh man. so oh. walk me your in, agent walk me. may have been like yo these dudes have 57k subs you should definitely go on their channel blah, blah, blah. oh i don't care about any of that but for your own but now uh, we have one mythology yeah. what happened yeah. here so we had this old channel right <laughs> We're like, we're doing a, a rebrand off the TMG Studios channel on, into our own individual channels, right? All the shows. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, I have this old YouTube channel. I haven't used it in a couple of years or whatever. Mm -hmm. Eight, I guess. It's a long time. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, might as well just start the rebrand from there. Okay. At the time, it was a good idea. And then apparently it was just like people weren't getting like the notifications when they hit the bell button. Algo was all fucked up. You deleted YouTube. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. Our listens on Spotify were higher than our YouTube views, yeah. which signaled to our YouTube rep that like we were doing pretty poorly in the algorithm. So we started this new channel as a way to kind of wipe the slate clean. And, and is help. that how it works? Uh, I look. I came here I secretly just to get notes on like how to do YouTube. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. we were gonna, I have wait, no are you the mole? No, uh, <laughs> I have no idea anymore. So I'm like, we gotta wipe the algo clean. I guess so. That's what we were told. They were saying that. Um, it says the most millennial woman <laughs> in this room. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. A the there intro was, for our guests is you have 2.6 million subs. You've been around yeah. for, you're They're a pioneer. Dead. I don't know where any of okay, them are Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> you also have a podcast, This Might Get Weird, with yes. Mamrie Hart. Yes. Uh, so that's also been around for a while as well. Yeah. Uh, but you're crushing in the algorithm. You're doing great stuff. I've, you know, I have never tried to cater to the algorithm, which I think is a huge detriment to <laughs> trying to be <laughs> I thought you were going to go like heartfelt, like yeah. just no, you guys. I am, the, this is the challenge 
things that I'm up against now, and maybe it has always been this way, that like I started in an era where it was like hobby turned job. And it still is for a lot of people. Like it is the best job in the world in so many ways. But then when it became an industry and an algorithm was established and working with an algorithm was, you know, known to... Uh, yield positive results Mm -hmm. I was just like I don't know that feels like it takes the soul out of like the work that you do and you become this like cog in a machine and you're catering to the AI overlords and uh (laughs) I never You're really like yourself in the mirror, like yeah, yeah. yeah. And Not I was like, the overlords. <laughs> thank you. On the other hand, I'm like, thank you, overlords. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I adjusted my foil hat and I went on with my day. Uh, and I've never, yeah, really like tried to understand the business side of it, like. Um, the way you're supposed to yeah. and so algorithm has always seemed like this entire like complete f- weird mythical creature to me that i've never understood so if you guys would like to explain it to me i'm all ears i'm always today. on the side you know if you build it they will come no, that's a, yeah. yeah and, I, and I, if I they think don't like, come yeah. <laughs> and uh, wear merch. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think there's something to say that like good content will rise to the top, yeah, yeah, right. uh, but good is like totally subjective. And I think when you watch creators that are really into what they're doing, like authentically enjoying each other themselves, the work that they're doing, I think that kind of reads to an audience more than maybe an algorithm does. But maybe that's yeah. wishful thinking. Yeah. I don't I know. Had a, I had a buddy who, I don't know if I should even be saying this. He signed an NDA. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> yeah, but he told me. <laughs> oh, he, well, he signed the NDA. Yeah, he signed it, not me. Okay. He told you as a entrusted friend. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so I guess when Facebook was releasing Lasso, it was like a t- some type of TikTok competitor, right? Lasso? Yeah. So I've never even known Not like, the show, Ted Lasso? No, no, no. It was yeah, like that's what I thought of. <laughs> No, it was supposed to be like their version of TikTok before like Reels came out or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And so they had him and like a bunch of other dudes essentially write like what's funny on the internet so he wrote like a 30 page paper of like what's funny full dissertation yeah and like basically the the idea was like as long as you're genuine then (laughs) but like they still had to write it like send it to the engineers and then they did they did fucking what is it like focus group testing yeah this sounds nda yeah 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 Yeah. they like play videos in front of kids it was crazy yeah where are those papers now (laughs) i don't know you should publish them (laughs) truly but but we did have a youtube rep conversation just to clue you in of the inside we had an inside scoop right we we didn't sign the nda and the the rep told you to start a new channel he advised he it was 50 up. yeah okay. it was 50 50 <laughs> like you guys can fucking off yourself with one last video yeah or you can start a new channel and continue this death one last time nice it's a little bit longer so we did that nice yeah, yeah no okay. but so nothing against you know if you wanted to do that or if you're thinking it's about just it like just like a lot of hassle yeah it is it is <laughs> oh it, it is. is yeah we took a leap so again thank you guys for subbing to the new channel. Yeah, fresh start. Yeah, you guys can be under the 2K subgroup. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Yeah, yeah <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, people like clipping your pods and stuff? You're on the TikTok uh, clip? Game? Explain TikTok to me. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, great. Well, so you can't explain it. Every yeah, fucking this, time. Is, this is why I'm here. Uh, we first of all, YouTube. I want to know your Vine stories. Oh, wow. Oh. Well, right? That's how you guys met yeah, each yeah, other? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And Vine to me was one of those things that I. I wish I had like a brain for and f- at the time I just like could not figure out how to make six second content was, like my brain could not figure it out I was watching your stuff you have the vine brain like you have the skits That's you have the kind. selfie stuff I'm, like, tr- I'm starting I'm trying but it, like at the time I was like well vine's gone <laughs> vine's here, so maybe it was okay maybe it's for the best that my brain didn't figure it out but you two met on vine yeah what yeah. was the first thing that you saw of each other that you were like I gotta meet this guy Oh man, so I reached out because I thought he was so funny. I oh, was, that's like, so, it was so genuine. It was so him. Whenever I was like, oh, let me DM him, like, it would Uh-oh. be fun to hang. But then <laughs> when I found out late years later, he was commenting on my videos, <gasps> like, as like a spam bot, like, check out my stuff. Uh, Wait, I what? Make funny vids. Like, you were yeah. spamming and his channel for your works. own marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, wow. like, he accepted himself in my brain. I thought you were going to bring up the Indian restaurants. Oh, yeah. And then our first time hanging out, he, like, 
there's all these restaurants in Long Beach, right? Like all these like, yeah. like a strip in, on Second Street. And the first place he takes me to, it was like the first stop. And he was like, it was like an Indian restaurant. And he's like, you want to go he's here? Afghan. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I guess. I'm not even Indian. I was like <laughs> thinking, because he lived there. I was like, have, oh, you ever, oh. have you ever been here before? He goes, no. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? What are we eating? It was a good restaurant. No, it wasn't. We went back. It, it was, was still cheap. Bad. <laughs> it was you guys are so sweet. Thank you. You were trying yeah. to impress each other. Thank you. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here oh. you are. But our yeah. humor matched on Vine. Yeah. Uh, but it was just, I would say Vine is just, you have to get that joke out super fast yeah and now it's just like confidently fast confidently like you fast. have to go like this is a great idea let me make it right now go i would say vine it was the hardest thing i've ever had to do and i really? was very appreciative or uh, uh glad that i conquered it i guess you could yeah, say yeah, like, yeah. I, we did it like yeah. we fucking got the jokes out and like yeah. i don't think a lot of people could do it anymore to be honest it, but, but i mean is that do you how similar do you consider tiktok to vine now so i was gonna say like the jokes are obviously more concise, but TikTok now is like Vine with just a few more seconds added on both sides. Like a okay. few more seconds added to the intro and a few more seconds added to the punchline. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. I would say like the best TikToks out right now are what, like thir 15 to 30 seconds? Yeah, now. I agree. Yeah. But aren't they pushing like minute and a half yeah, you, can, you can do 10 minutes i watched yeah. a movie. right <laughs> <laughs> i watched the movie in clips you watched doing two really? no 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 that would have been doing two was great yeah wow nice okay not on tiktok not on tiktok <laughs> yeah. no <laughs> yeah they are pushing out uh like longer form but i just don't think it's gonna do well but yeah interesting yeah as we sit here doing a full length yeah, podcast <laughs> i know well that's why like so on our new channel we're trying to do shortened videos more like skits more bits and stuff like that cool. and and hopefully get that algorithm back up and at him. But so wait, you just didn't do Vine at all when it came out? Like I didn't do Vine, but it felt like this pressure because it became such a massive thing. You have people like Brittany Furlon and King Batch and like all of these people that are like, you know, yeah. huge names that are growing out of this uh, platform. And at the time, it was just like Instagram was, you know, flourishing and then Facebook and it was so stressful to feel like do i have to make content for every fucking platform can i curse on this yes, okay yes. Yeah, yeah, um yeah. for every fucking platform yeah. <laughs> and well it was just and that was like racking my brain to make so much content on youtube that i just like i was burnout at the time too i was just like i simply can't add another platform to yeah. this right now so it would but i was like this is very cool i have such admiration for how like I said, confidently quick, you guys were able to generate ideas and to do it on the go. Like I remember hearing about people on Vine editing their videos on their phones in Ubers. And I was like, that's not how you make content. You have to have final cut yeah. and you have to sit at a computer. You have to have a very rudimentary understanding of editing. Yeah. And I was it was just unbelievable to me. It was the first time that I felt like, Oh, I'm getting old and I can't keep up. I don't. Yeah, I like I said, your content is still like right there with like That's the right. Vine age and the the like the TikTok stuff. Now you're right there. So yeah, I'm dabbling. I'm trying to have fun again and not yeah. think of too. it. I Are you? I yeah. I, yeah he we just had a whole algorithm talk, but <laughs> I <laughs> also am not giving a fuck. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. it's like you can become so soulless when you make content strictly for the algorithm yeah. i think i got like that at one point on vine i was like i gotta hit 1.5 i'm so close yeah, yeah numbers and, and i did really it for like with three you. months just hardcore yeah making videos and then yeah i just said then it felt icky after yeah. yeah uh more background about you about your podcast this might get weird yeah uh how did you meet memory heart we met uh on a sketch comedy team in new york city um at the people's improv theater we were both placed on this sketch comedy team that existed previously and they had like lost two members we didn't know each other and the first sketch that this sketch comedy team put together like pitched to us was called everybody loves grace and where everyone on the team uh was in love with me and everyone hated memory and so that was how we met each other <laughs> <laughs> and after that i was living in brooklyn uh, working for a company making YouTube videos at the time, like kind of secretly and privately because I was trying to do New York comedy scene. And so the internet was like this, oh no, nerdy. Scary, like, yeah. Well, it's like no one knew about it and everyone looked down on it compared to like traditional kind of 
tracks in comedy. So it was like my secret little life that I had. But Mamrie saw that I was making videos and she was like, I have an idea for a web series called You Deserve a Drink. I'm a bartender, but I want to make like comedy videos. I don't have any equipment. Could I come over to your place and could you help me shoot this? And we lived like a mile away from each other, we realized. And so she came over and we shot and it was so fun. And then like we just started working on projects from there and making videos together. And yeah. now she's an Indian restaurant. Oh. No, I know. Some Italian like uh, <laughs> I saw you follow Cheesecake Factory on your TikTok. Are you a huge yeah, Cheesecake they Factory reach, fan? Um yeah, it started as a joke and now it's like see well, because you know, I'm raised in the suburbs, so Cheesecake Factory was like Mecca. the fanciest yeah. restaurant you could go to. I've also worked at Chili's and Applebee's and Olive Garden. So I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Chili's. I know. Oh, sorry, I should have led with that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I worked at my favorite restaurants growing nice, up, nice. so I was like at sixteen, being like, "I'm peaking as the hostess of this Chili's yeah. by the Deptford Mall." Uh, and Cheesecake Factory was always the one that everyone wanted to work at because the prices were higher, so you could make bigger tips. But the menu was insane to study, so it was always this like echelon that I could never get to. But now, um, yeah, when I rung the bell for uh, breast cancer, they uh, sent me a hundred dollar gift card. Oh, fuck yeah, <laughs> dude! I got sent so I got sent a Chili's package. I got sent. Did you? Yeah, I got sent a uh, a shirt. No. And I got sent a gift card, and I yeah. thought like this was like my first ever gift from Chili's. I was like, oh, dude, this gift. But the card. package was incredible. It was a, it was like a legit like yeah, influencer yeah. package. You know nice. what I mean? So so it was like a huge box. It played music totally when you open it. Totally not recyclable. Like yeah. a waste yeah, yeah, of materials. Gift card was twenty five dollars. Wow. Yeah, it was not like... cancer related or anything like that. If it was twenty five dollars, I would have been like, all right, like <laughs> fucking I sick. <laughs> Yeah. I see how you value life. Cool. Yeah, Very cool. But I took my wife out to Chili's uh, after a 49ers victory Excellent. and had to cover the rest of the cost. <laughs> but... <laughs> nice. That's always the best when you give the gift card yeah. and then also your credit yeah, card. Yeah, she was like, so this is done now. I was like, <laughs> okay, and this is the check done as well, right? <laughs> Absolutely not. You owe $70. I was like, fuck yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, how was your waitress hostess life? Very honestly not fun is not the word i want to use but i think extremely formative like i it was one of my favorite jobs ever it, really i was so bad at it because i was still i was probably 19 20 21 in those years as a server i like hardly drank so i had no idea how to upsell alcohol which is how you make all your money <laughs> serving so people would be like i want a martini and i'd be like Ah, what kind of tequila would you like in that? They'd be like, Ooh, I oh. love a martini. Dude, when they asked for like alcohol references, and I, I was also the same age, yeah. I would have zero clue. Didn't drink yeah. at all. I didn't, I didn't drink until college. So yeah, yeah just, I had zero idea about it. Yeah, but. it was, and I was also like very shy. I think it, I had just started taking like improv classes in New York, and I was waiting tables while I was at school, and so I had like no personality. Tour. like if i did it now i would crush as a server oh yeah but then i was just like trying to get through shifts just trying to get maybe 20 percent tip on a bill would be incredible um but also it was like i was working at chili's then at applebee's and applebee's was just like the place where all the high school kids went on their like saturday nights so you'd have a table of about 12 kids that would order one order of boneless chicken wings and then waters for everyone Dude, and then they would sit there <laughs> for like four hours and then wait for the parents to pick yeah. them up yeah, and they couldn't decide amongst themselves who was going to pay for yeah. these boneless wings and you're like jesus christ this is like awful yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but i do think like everyone should at some point have some experience in the service industry Absolutely, i do yeah. think it helps you just like understand and relate to people and have empathy and compassion for um people that work in that world yep. uh but yeah it's it's interesting and mamory was a bartender for like years and years so i think she and i had similar sort of like backgrounds and understandings of of things uh but I, I'm I'm okay not doing it anymore. Right. Yeah, I think it's better when you do it younger because yeah. when you're growing up, you're like you're still learning how to talk to people and be social yeah. and like yeah. you know breaking the ice. And I think working in food is probably the best. What do you think of the automation of serving? Do you think robots? 
Robot. Bro, robot. I mean, I'm a little scared of the AI of it all <laughs> in general, yeah. as we've already seen some Freudian slips of our AI overlords. Um, <laughs> the I I uh, I know it's going to be uh, good. I like it at the airport. Nice. I like where I, I can like sit at an app. At, at the airport? Yeah, like in the Philly airport, you can sit at an iPad and oh, order yourself yeah. a drink. And I don't mind that because I feel like, you know. Don't need to talk to anyone. Else. I, yeah, yeah, it's for the best. Um, but I think like I also worked at like fine dining restaurants where it's like people are, this is their profession. They're professional mm -hmm. servers. You can make really incredible money if you know how to work that system. So I don't know that robots can replace that, but we'll see, I guess. Can't replace personality. Yeah. Like Especially if you go to like a steakhouse or something. Yeah. <laughs> like they like riz, they riz can you they up. Can they crumb a yeah. table? Yeah. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Because like with offer alcohol recommendations. <laughs> yeah. Good, actually, yeah. I think that <laughs> due to your palate, it looks like you would love. Due to your alcohol, they probably yeah. have a great recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but like a like at a steakhouse, they always like you know like a guy like you, you d you deserve to eat this kind of steak. Like, <laughs> 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 Kenny, can we play that one clip? I know you wanted to save it, but just the server. Uh, oh, this is fantastic! Yeah, yeah. I guess they have. We're finding out you're a server now or ex-server. This is very yeah. topical. So oh yeah, I saw that. This is in France. This croissant and water race. Wow, <laughs> knowledgeable. Yeah, I'm in the algorithm it. of Instagram <laughs> that feeds me this. Kenny, you want to tee us off? Yeah, so basically this is a race that happens every year in Paris. I guess it's been happening for decades, uh, but these waiters have to carry a tray of water. It looks like an espresso and a croissant. 1.2 miles, and you have wow. to like... Too fast walk it. You can't run. You can't run, The Great right. Depression of serving? This is sick. Yeah, it looks like it dates back to 1929. Wow. Can Crazy. robots do this, guy? No. Exactly. Yeah. Look how cool that is. Look how cool that looks. Well, those that LA robots fucking piss me off. The one that ran you over, dude. Oh, yeah. The fucking... <laughs> oh, the, the delivery? The ones? Yeah. Yeah. He jumped in front of one. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get a lawsuit. Trying to hit him. Well, yeah. What happens when you get in its way? He broke it, a pinky. No, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, it's for the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they just stopped. They're pretty good about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now the cars are driving. You see they, they're rolling out full self-driving on all Teslas. The Waymo things? No, 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 Waymo. On all cars, if you own a Tesla now, you're going to have one month full self-driving for free. Is it a system you pay for? You yeah, pay for the self-driving? You're supposed to, but now they're like our AI overlords. Are yeah. Like, you could do it for one month for free. Wow. Do yeah. you guys have Teslas? I do. I'm gonna try it after this. Are you yeah. gonna? You're gonna try it? Gonna that try is it. such a rele like relinquish control. I know. No, 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 no. I, I'm excited for it. I think driving, you shouldn't be driving. I, yeah, I agree. <laughs> Out here, like, I agree. As opposed to okay. what, dude? Like, I don't know. What if I would just leave my phone or, you know, get work done or something? Just focus on the road for like 30 <laughs> minutes. You could do it. No, driving should be, it's an old. As I make videos while driving. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, anyways, Grace, would love to get into the deep, dark stuff of the cancer world. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about your experience as I yeah. reflect immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, yes. Uh, the deep dark world of my world, yes. <laughs> well, no, I, I'm curious. No, yeah. Uh, so I had like a, a lump mm -hmm. in my ball, right side, uh, in December or early December, November ish of 2020. Wow. Just ignored it for a while. Yeah. But I, I felt it while like showering. Yeah. Um, had my wife check on it. She was like, I think I feel something, but I'm not sure. I was like, okay. My birthday was December 31st and she was laying on me and she was laying on my nipple and it was it ended up being gynecomastia, which is breast of men, so okay. swollen nipples. Wow. And it uh that is affected from the tumor affecting your hormones and making you think that you have estrogen or something like that. Yeah, so it yeah. gives you breasts. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna just double D right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh but I it was like painful. Wow. So then I was like, that was, was in, painful here. Yeah. In my, Damn. in my tits. Wow. So that was in January. I was like, Hey, definitely something's going on. Yeah. So then I went this to this during pandemic, like height of pandemic. Uh, yeah. Towards yeah. the end of like the, the first window. Right. So I went in January or no, it was like June or Jan. Or no, I went in January mm -hmm. and the doctor first misdiagnosed me. Whoa. I did a uh, blood and urine mm -hmm. and they tested me for cancer, but I didn't have it. Okay. So then I went again, like six months later, diagnosed, 
um, of stage 2B testicular cancer. Wow. And I was like, fuck, like, I'm pretty sure I could have caught it a little earlier stages if yeah. that was the case. Uh, ended up doing three months of chemo after surgery, which is kind of crazy because some doctors say that I should have had the reverse. I should have had chemo first and then... Uh, if it went away, then I could have saved my ball, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they just eliminated the tumor first and then gave me chemo to eliminate the rest of my cancer in my body. Wow. So, not sure if that was the best case scenario, but whatever it happened. You're in such a whirlwind. How do you even, like, yeah. weigh those options? Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. So, it's always fun to get the second opinions after the oh, yeah. <laughs> surgery yeah, happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, you could have just... <laughs> like, oh, but see, oh I, I forget in the medical <laughs> world that you can even get a second opinion. I know. Oh, yeah. I'm so like rule follower, like doctors are yeah. beyond the scope of what my brain Overlords. can understand. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. That I'm like, I believe everything they say to yeah. me. Yeah. So I was uh, in, again, the COVID world. Wow. And during the chemo life, uh was just like depressed as fuck. Like just no one around me. It was just like the enclosed chemo areas. Wow. Like I didn't have my wife, no friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah, why well, your wife couldn't be there? No. Yeah. Yeah. Just wow. my, the nurses are so good. Like I love yeah. them. They were yeah. the best. Uh, but like I was like reading during chemo and like even reading turned into something gross because like even after cancer and everything, because I just affiliated like yeah. reading with the chemo. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I hated books. Uh, just randomly. Wow. <laughs> because, I mean, that's a cautionary tale. Yeah. <laughs> so I see a book. I, I'm, not, yeah. I'm good now. I'm good now. Yeah, yeah I can read. Uh, <laughs> don't know that's why. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there was like, even it took me like, I would say a year, two years to like fully just be back on my feet. And that was like, I was, I wanted to ask you, like, we rang the bell. Yeah. And like, we are, Everyone's like, yo, you crushed cancer. Congrats. And I'm like, I still, in the back of my head, I was like, it's coming back. It's the weirdest yeah. feeling ever. Yeah. For that's, I mean, congratulations. And I know it feels fucking bizarre yeah. still, especially you had trauma on top of a global trauma yeah. happening. So, like, for you to be able to process all of that, I'm sure is a constant, like, what the hell happened? And what the hell happened to the world at the same yeah. time? Like, we were only processing this global thing. You had a personal crisis at the same time. So I commend you for even doing comedy and being at this part of it. I definitely took it as a joke. But yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, that's stuff. the thing. Like, I, I had to kind of really hold on to humor throughout the whole thing it was the only way i could really process the intensity of yeah. it because it was such for me i had a lump in my left breast that i had felt same similar like for a while but mm -hmm. kind of in denial of mm -hmm. like that's not what that feels like i have no like no one teaches you yeah. how to check yeah. all of this stuff yeah and even when you google it there's kind of a wide net yeah. of opinions mm -hmm. out there about things and also i was relatively like resilient and healthy and hadn't had any history of this my family has no history so it was just like this is so far reaching for me to think that this is anything mm -hmm. And then I showed my husband and he, I think, was con he was quietly convinced. He told me afterwards that like he was like, oh, shit, but wasn't trying to let on yeah. that it was anything. And he was like, yeah, maybe ask the gynecologist about it. And I was like, yeah, I guess. And then in a couple of weeks, it'll be a, a year to when I had my gynecologist appointment just a regular exam and she like felt around i was just like seeing if maybe she would feel it first and like say something and she didn't and she was like wrapping up the exam i was like by the way i felt like a lump over here did you notice that and she like felt around and was like oh yeah okay yeah let me give you a list of um, surgical doctors that uh, you can go see and they'll check it out and if it's anything serious they'll order a biopsy and a mammogram and i'd never had a mammogram before i still trend younger than the ages that they're encouraging women to get mammograms yeah. and now i'm like every woman in their 30s should be out there getting a mammogram just to see just to check that's the one where they crush your tit right yeah oh that. it's like i a, had that for my gynecomastia yeah, it hurt yeah like but a you motherfucker. Did, isn't that crazy yeah, i had a biopsy in that machine oh. they like squish my tit and then put needles in it oh. and it was some of the like once the craziest thing is like i've been a much um a, a, 
radically like healthier relationship to my body than I've ever been in my adult yeah. life, which the weird byproduct for me of the whole experience. And I'm continuing to process. I still think I'm like, just now hitting like the PTSD of like what the fuck just What's happened yeah. for the last year the whiplash yeah, of it all a wild ride <laughs> yeah because as soon as <laughs> going on for a little longer I, and I've heard and everyone's <laughs> warned me about that so I've been kind of conscious that that was that my mental health was going to be up for grabs and I thankfully worked with like a really great therapist that I like doubled down on like seeing throughout the process yeah. um and also like it sparked this weird um purposeful feeling of making content throughout the process yeah. like I had been pretty burnt out I went to grad school uh, just to get away from YouTube for a little bit and still continued to podcast but wasn't really trying to make content because I just like couldn't wrap my head around like who fucking cares what I have to say about anything yeah. like I was just in that phase of being like this is a narcissistic playground and blah like just a bad spot and then got some perspective went to grad school started to feel like back into myself a little bit and then got this diagnosis and was like oh shit but as soon as I shared it because I was like I can either keep this to myself and try to just go through this as privately as possible which will be tough but is possible or I can tell people yeah. what's going on bizarrely I had this like timing where a friend of mine Hank Green got who is a content creator TikTok a YouTuber godfather of like internet um got diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma like two months before my diagnosis and I was watching him uh, share his experience with his audience and texting him like I'm so inspired and encouraged by how you're handling this. Like you should, I know this is crazy. You should feel so proud or something like that while I'm like quietly waiting for my own biopsy results yeah. in the background. Yeah. And then like a month later texted him and I was like, so I know last time I was like, good job, but guess what? <laughs> I got it too. You're in the same boat. No. No. Uh, spicy spy. And it was very weirdly helpful to be able to make content through the process for it to help me process yeah. and also to realize how many people are affected by this or know someone that is going through it or even something similar like an autoimmune disease mm -hmm. i have been very privileged to be like completely not exposed to the medical world for my entire adult life yeah. so this was like the first time i had been in hospitals for extended periods of time and it was and still is very strange to think how much your world gets completely yeah. turned upside down, but also how much everyone like Chili's was like rushing to help me or and offer support and yeah. be like, hey, I've gone through this. I know this person's gone through this. Do you want to talk to this person? Here's some tips. Here's what you need. You should work with this doctor. But like an overwhelming amount of information that really was helpful and just like beautiful to see how immediately responsive people were to be helpful. And I was just like, I got to pay this forward in some way. And the only way I could think in the time was just by sharing the experience of it as much as I, I still want, you know, not all of it, obviously, yeah. cause it's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever look back at like some of the earlier stuff? Do you ever like rewatch those videos or anything like that? Not yet. Uh, I, I sometimes I'll see like a thumbnail of, my announcement video and i'm like well wow she was really scared and it's like a little sad but at the same time i'm like it's an up and down experience yeah. and thankfully knock on wood like i had a pretty okay like experience through it and i'm in re remission now what stage were you they think it was like 2B. It was triple positive breast cancer, either 2A, 2B. Um, they weren't entirely sure. But same thing, like had I the year before told my gynecologist like about something, might have been different because I had to do six rounds of chemo and then figure out what kind of surgery I wanted to do after that. Thankfully, I had a friend that four years later or four years earlier had the same diagnosis, same exact treatment plan. So at least triple positive breast cancer was very treatable and there was like a very black and white treatment plan for it. Yeah. So I didn't have to wrap my head around like, okay, what's plan B and plan C and plan D in case this doesn't work out. So I, I had a pretty 
straightforward path, which was really helpful when suddenly your world feels like a fever dream. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just when like, he found out, the, I haven't gone to the doctor. Maybe like there was like a span of like four or five years. I never like didn't go. Yeah. Yeah. Check-in. Literally the next like week got everything. Did like, you? Blood work, yeah. Physical. Because it was so. Scary. Yeah. I'm, that's the. Yeah. yeah. Cause you get like the DM. I'm sure you see the DMs of like, oh, uh, I have this. Like, can you like describe if this is what you had? I'm like, guys, I'm not going to fucking answer your questions. Yeah. Just please just go to the doctor yeah, on yeah, your yeah. own. Like, I'm not going to like. Yeah. Fucking tell you to go like turn your head and cough to the right and if you feel yeah, yeah, like yeah. i don't know like You're just like, please I go didn't, i didn't know what i had yeah. that's the whole point i yeah. had to get a doctor to tell me what yeah. was going on yeah. yeah there's been a lot of um young women that have gotten their mammograms for the first time yeah. and have either found something or found something and it wasn't yeah, yeah you yeah. know something and either way i it's like just getting checked and knowing what's going on is the most important thing because I was very adverse to going to the doctor. I was like, I feel fine. Yeah. So I won't go until there's an actual yeah. problem. Yeah. And yeah, it. I. Um, everyone's got to go. I know. Yeah. There was like a buddy of mine um, who had like, a, a, not to get gravel, like a tennis ball size Jesus. in his nut. And uh, he only, he had just stage one, like, like wow. rookie stage and i was like rookie not like envious <laughs> but i was just like dude like yours is so much bigger than mine yeah like, what? <laughs> i was like no fair. <laughs> bodies are so weird i was pissed i was like damn dude and he didn't really have to do chemo or anything like that so wow. he's flexing it yeah, yeah. yeah. like thrown off the wall like yeah, wow. no big deal. yeah but i wanted to get more into like the uh the lingering effect of like just your headspace of like yeah i mean one it puts you in a deep appreciation for your body and yeah. also a total fear of your body yeah. i still as optimistic and positive as i feel on good days i still have that low hum of anxiety that like anything could go wrong at any minute like my husband and i just went to disney on wednesday as like a yeah we're healthy yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway no but yeah my, we did, did make that joke um Sorry. my sweet friend gave me like tickets because she gets free tickets so we we're like let's go let's get really high and run around disney yeah. for the day this will be awesome and it was great but at like four o'clock i felt so tired yeah, yeah and then i started to like feel that panic of like oh shit did i can you imagine if somehow i get cancer again <laughs> from <laughs> being a disney from mickey being mouse tired? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like just yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. your brain is just like my body can do incredible things and also really terrible things. So uh, I'm I'm trying to you know regain the autonomy of yeah. your body of being like I want to trust it as like uh, and take care of it as like a, a source. And really, you know that body is a temple kind of thing. Really, sort of shook me this last year of being like, oh, I can't just like drink as much as I want and eat whatever I want and yeah. like bounce back. Like it's not just that hangovers are going to get a little harder. It's like I really actually need to take care yeah. of my body. And I'm really thankful because I don't know that I would have learned that lesson otherwise unless this like weird divine intervention of you know some sort of universal energy shaking my body and being like wake up i know yeah <laughs> but i don't think it sounds like you weren't like crazy drinker or, like drunk oh person. i was drinking a ton oh, okay. yep. oh, but, yeah. I, but i had stopped <laughs> i had drank for years uh just in my like 20s and 30s and then had actually stopped drinking for like six months before right before i got my diagnosis and i was yeah. like it was the timing of it was all very weird like i had gotten married that fall i had just graduated that spring i had stopped drinking and then it was like okay perfect your schedule's clear you're married you're done with school you're not yeah. drinking yeah. well here you go you got cancer now yeah, good yeah. luck <laughs> and it was honestly like a, a a weird it's so weird to be like it was a good setup to get cancer <laughs> like yeah. it, of all the timing all. Yeah, in yeah, my yeah. life like yeah. it was the okay enough timing for it to happen yeah but it, it still rocks you and yeah. i still feel like i'm in the process now like i go and get these hormone infusions every three weeks now for i think i have a, like 11 10 or 11 more sessions of it and i go back to the center where i got my chemo mm -hmm. and i ended my chemo at the end of november and when I go back to these sessions now, even the smell 
of the parking garage when I pull in makes me so yeah. emotional. There's this bandage that I asked the nurses to not give me anymore. Really? Because it smelled just so horrendous oh. to me. Yeah. They, and they were like, they I could tell that they were just like kind of like trying to be buddy buddy with me, like, yeah, I smell it too. Yeah. And I was like, I yeah. know you don't smell it. It's just like the <laughs> fucking weird smell. Of, yeah. But yeah. they've seen everything. I, I same with you. The nurses were like angels to yeah, me. Really I was nice. just like, these women are incredible. They're so like personable they're so and professional and yeah. amidst like everything that they're seeing on an everyday basis know, yeah. like i i it really made it clear to me like how wonderful they are and how i can't do that job i know <laughs> yeah yeah i was like downplaying it too like uh i was only in there for like three months and there's like people next to me i was listening to their conversations like years and years yeah. of i was like oh my god it was like a depressing year. But yeah. yeah, yeah. I did um cold capping to try and save my hair through the process so I didn't have to shave my head. And it's like a crapshoot. Like you, it, I did it for the six sessions, but I still lost like probably like half of my hair. Just, you know, it's not a perfect system, but you yeah. basically freeze your hair, freeze your entire scalp wow. so that the follicles, the chemo drugs can't reach the follicles essentially. So you put this, they wet your hair, they put this thing on, at least the system that I did called Digni Caps. There's a few other systems out there that you can research that um, all do it different ways. And they basically bring over this, um, what looks like a portable like air conditioning unit. And it's hooked up to this like, cap that you wear and then it freezes your head so the first half hour you kind of sit and it's just like a really intense brain freeze as your head freezes and then you can't really feel your head for like the six hours that you have chemo and but it sounds like you have an air conditioning unit like on your head so every chemo session i couldn't hear like anyone that would talk to me and there'd be oh, these super yeah. sweet like volunteers that would come around with like juice and snacks these older women that were also breast cancer survivors and i'd just be like trying to read their lips <laughs> and i've been talking to my husband the whole time and then when i went back for my uh hormone infusions i'm not doing the cold capping anymore i sat there and i was my husband didn't come with me because i was like i can do it by myself yeah. i'm gonna go and i sat there i was like texting him being like this is the quietest room I've ever been and he's like yeah you were loud as fuck every <laughs> single time you were there because I couldn't hear anything so I'd just be like what did that woman say <laughs> these nurses are so nice like insane and I was like sitting there just thinking back to six different days that I was here for six hours a day just screaming at these people <laughs> it was very embarrassing but yeah there's a lot of it's strange now to see how all of the feelings come up when I go there and I, I'm actually able to like look around and see because when I was there for my sessions of chemo I was just like I'm in my little air conditioned alcove I'm just gonna like power Freeze through for room, yeah, yeah. 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 And I'm gonna sit here for six hours so I'm not really paying attention and now I'm going back and I'm seeing all of the people around and hearing them talk to each other and tell their stories and it's like an incredibly emotional yeah. space yeah do you have any uh lasting effects from the chemo like I have like purple lips from like, the chemo. Yeah, I have like different color shade on my lips. Oh, yeah. Have, is there a mark right on this side? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have yeah. a chemo. It's a... Uh, Whoa. Yeah. yeah. I guess it's, a, it's a mark that like is a whip effect from the chemo drugs or something like that. And I Whoa. got mine right here. But some people get it like on their back or like other parts of their body. And, Whoa. You know, I guess you got I'll a little ball spot it. too. Right? <laughs> well, yeah. That's not from the chemo. <laughs> <Yeah. right? laughs> it's not just casual. Grace, you zoomed out on that part, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. <laughs> um, I, it's been fun to see, like, my hair stayed for the most part. And then after my last chemo session, that's when the majority of my hair fell out. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like, I've done six sessions with this fucking air conditioner six times. Losing and, friends. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, not making a good impression on the nurses that I really yeah, wanted yeah. to be friends with. And then my hair started just like shedding like crazy, which I have been told is possible. So it's growing. So, like, half my hair is growing back in, and it's like a different technique texture than the hair that's there now so this year will be quite a year of discovery as the hair continues to grow back in yeah. my eyelashes are coming back in a little strange um but now i just have hot flashes which is just very fun i've been my the drugs that i take kind of push me into like a menopausal state nice. so 
wildly emotional sometimes and get hot flashes, which is uh, just so goofy to me that suddenly my body's just like, oh, we're hot. Well, <laughs> I saw you, aud- you, try- you auditioned for Survivor, so what's going to happen if you... Oh, yeah, fake to- audition. But like, what? You got to do it. I, I could never be on Survivor. What? That's the thing. I could never, nor do I want to. Like, I do think I understand how wildly uncomfortable it is to actually be 24 hours a day on that show. I watch yeah. the show, but I don't think I would be a good cast member at all whatsoever. Yeah. Would you guys go on Survivor? Yeah, but I would get like, <laughs> I'm out first day. No, well, yeah. But see, you say that and then you stick, I feel like people would keep you around because you'd be so personable. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's like, uh, there was this guy last year uh, have you watched last season? Yeah. Survivor? Remember that dude, Brandon? He was like a Yeah, he commented producer. on my video being like, I set the bar really low for you. <laughs> <laughs> dude, With the glasses I, and curly hair. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. If I put the link in there, I was just like, yo, someone needs to like redeemed because he was like the only like content producer from that like season or whatever. Oh, yeah, he had a tough go. Yeah. And so there's a scene where he has to, it's like the first, like, first of all, everybody's excited, right? Yeah. He just got on the boat. You know, maybe like six hours, like you're into Fiji, you're like... This is, yeah, where this makes me the most nervous. The first challenge, or the first physical anything on this show makes me the most nervous because everyone's like a caged animal. And these are not, for the most part, like they don't cast professional athletes anymore. And so I'm always worried that someone's going to go too hard and hurt themselves like in a radical way. This is also first impressions. Like if you... Yeah, you're a team, you're a tribe. If you crush it... You haven't even given it like introduced yourself yeah Yeah. if you crush it then you're automatically someone that's on the chopping block because you're like oh you're too good yeah if you suck then you're on the chopping block because you're like oh this dude's dead weight right so you have to be middle tier the whole so yeah with everything so when when this when they did this he they were actually in the lead they were like right go ahead their team's like jazz and then can you lulu yeah yeah. Yeah. so that that now he has to climb up this ladder Come on, Brandon. And this guy can, just has to get up this ladder on the side of a cannot... ship. It's all upper body strength. Oh, God. And you have Jeff Probst yeah, yeah, making right. commentary. <laughs> like, everyone's a super fan, so it's like your idol is commenting on you doing this. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, it's buddy. so tough. Oh, God. <laughs> I have nothing but, like... Okay, like oh, the, not the that under shot. You don't need that shot. Whoever that editor is is a piece of shit because he did not need oh. that shot at all. Oh, and oh, then for him so to just no, climb his up boy's over. gonna try to help him now. Jeez. Wait, so Brandon's the dude that commented on your? Yeah, he said he set the bar very low. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's like he's self-aware. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Oh, we're not done. No, it no. goes he's on still, for a he's while. He's still not up the ladder. You're part of the editing, oh. like. Like shit talking guy. You're well, you don't need this. Oh, oh not yeah. that shot. You never needed it. Pull him up, guys. It's, it's, it almost makes Survivor into like the greatest comedy at the same well, time. It, well, because now there's a, I guess, sort of like a debate. I saw a tweet of the, I don't know if you guys are watching the most recent season now. There's a, someone tweeted like, as a fellow dork, stop casting dorks. Like, yeah. please yeah. just cast, like, you know, that weird old veteran that, like, knows how to yeah, tie yeah, knots yeah. and make a fire. Yeah. The CrossFit pro. But everyone's, like, a super, super fan of the show, which is fun to see, but I feel like they will underestimate, like, how physically demanding it is, which is why I don't want to go on the show. Yeah. I, I think I well, estimate how... Person. I'm off. I can't do puzzle. I can, uh, like... Even coming here to park today, I was like, <laughs> I was like, if anyone is outside of the building we that's going to watch me spot. try to find <laughs> a parking spot, I'm going to get into a car accident. <laughs> well, it's funny because in your audition tape, you're like, oh, uh, I can't do puzzles if anyone's looking at me or thinking about yeah, me. Yeah. No. That's all they're all. <laughs> no. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> you and Mamrie talk about uh, other reality TV shows. You yeah. said you're on a reality binge uh, marathon right now. What other shows are you watching? A lot of Bravo stuff. Nice. A lot of Vanderpump Rules is on right now. The Bachelor just finished. Excellent season. Joey set a very high tier for the quality of men we hope to see on that mm-hmm. show. I don't know if you guys watched this season. I saw the new bachelors that are coming out, or for the bachelor. Wait, was Bachelorette. That the- Bachelorette. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I saw the new men that are coming out for her. Oh, I haven't seen that part yet. Oh okay. yeah. Well, there's like a, a carousel of just dudes. Oh they, really? They looked yeah. Average. Yeah. They looked 
you know, yeah. doable. Unoffensive. <laughs> un- yeah, unoffensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Could they yeah. climb a ladder? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we're watching that. What else are we watching right now? Drag Race, obviously. Yep. Yeah, we're in the thick of it in Drag Race right now. Um, yeah. Who did Vanderpump that um, cheated? Yeah, the Scandoval. That yeah, the Scandoval. Thing Tom Sandoval. Season. Tom Sandoval. But why Scandoval. is he getting airtime? That's the big question. Dude, like, <laughs> no, no, like so this dude cheated. We don't really talk about that show a lot yeah. uh, because it's just not that fun to watch this season. But now he's going on like a, a tour of like singing and shit and it's yeah. horrendous singing. But he's mm-hmm. like just busting yeah. away. He thinks he's the shit. And, like, yeah, <laughs> dude, it's crazy. And he says on the show that he has to do it for financial reasons that it's not just him living out his rock star fantasy that he's got to make so money so somehow so i was like have you heard of chilies <laughs> <laughs> like, there are other ways to make other, money yeah. Yeah. uber eats driver you yeah. can be under an alias <laughs> 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 you're the survivor <laughs> are you guys watching reality television right now me and my wife absolutely love it what are you watching uh we watch well as traders yeah i haven't watched the. i watched the first episode of the second season but then haven't gotten into it yeah the uk version of traders is way better than the u.s version because they have actual like celebrities for us okay and you know that they all have money right so this premise of traders if you don't know is there's faithful people it's all it's a house of people it's divided of traders which is like around three to four people and faithful people which is the rest of the house and you try and vote people off in a circ- uh, table uh, of like, okay, this person's a traitor. And then at the end of the voting, they're either revealed as the faithful or a traitor. And it's dwindled down to having the last few people uh, win the pot of money. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. That was the best I could describe that. Yeah. No, that was uh, great. Thank you so much. It's a complex game. Yeah. But in this US version, there's actual celebrities and you know that they have bank of money yeah so you're watching it like okay so if they win this is like pocket this is tax write-off yeah for them. Yeah. yeah yeah that's <laughs> true uh do you watch taskmaster at all i don't What's i feel like one? you guys would love that reggie watts no it's a a british game show where they bring comedians on and each season there's like five different comedians that are there for the whole season and they have them do these insane tasks and every episode they show like how each comedian did the task and Greg Davies, the host, uh, scores them. And it's a little bit like At Midnight, kind of, uh, but it's been going on for like 16 seasons. It's so fun. You can watch it on YouTube and just British humor to me is like just so good and yeah, absurd but they have all these different comedians like stand-up comedians comedic actors and people like i've never heard of before that are so great it's great and a new season starting soon i want right. i want them to bring back like mtv reality dude jersey shore no, no yeah jersey shore <laughs> jersey oh, shore is still have right i know but like shows like date my mom oh yeah oh, next yeah, yeah. All yeah of next like whatever that era was yeah, yeah. my disaster wife date fuck disaster date was so good my wife's a casting producer and she has works of like shows like that happening wow. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, that's cool. her date. <laughs> Man, like that. she's seen the levels of desperation. Dude, I, <laughs> I sit in on some of her like interviews for like people that she's like casting. And, yeah. Like, the interviews are fucking like insane. Like wow. I can't obviously dive into too much of the interviews, but I don't know. Like some of the shows are like families. So like uh the people calling in are um interviewing like their families to interview the other family so that they can uh date their parents or something like that what just, just like just to show huh? <laughs> White swap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's family <laughs> it's family swap basically so if the families work then the the interviewees would work if that makes sense got it got it so an arranged marriage yeah 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 basically. Yeah. so yeah. what my family does <laughs> yeah basically. is that what kind of reality yeah, you want? that's basically yeah, every, yeah that's what you're looking for yeah Wow, what a wild job. Yeah, it's fun. So she's seen it all, I'm sure. Yeah. And heard it all. Yeah. Wow. She's got some good TVs in the works, good TV shows. Good happening. for her. Yeah. But I don't, she tried casting me in, uh, or she's part of like a crew of casting people, and some of her casting friends tried casting me in the circle. <gasps> and I was the most boring interview of. Really? 
all time. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to be on the show? I thought I could be like an okay, like I can be a good alias. You yeah, know? yeah, I entertaining. Be like, yeah. yeah. You're going to play alias or you're going to play yourself? No, I'd be an alias. Really? What kind of alias? Because you always have to like, if someone knows Zach Piona on the show, they're like, wait, I know that guy. That guy yeah. sucks. Or that guy's. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to be an alias, but uh, my interview was like, the person asked what I do for fun and I like you have to be you have to lie like you do you yeah. really do yeah. being married to yeah. tots and listening to all these interviews like you have to make the casting producer laugh their ass off sure. fucking like be in love with you so I said I like to golf in my free time oh. and I don't golf I don't golf that's just the first thing that yeah I said I like to golf <laughs> and I, I must juggle be, anything dude yeah. I, the guy I instantly right when I said that he was like nice and I was like <laughs> Oh, like, fuck. <laughs> what else am I supposed to say? I don't, I don't know. Really build car it. towers or some shit. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Watch TV. Yeah. Yeah. Hang out with friends. That's what. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like travel. Yeah. Eat ex- interesting food. Cockfighting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to Chili's. Yeah. 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 Cockfighting uh, would have been good. Yeah. So I thought I would have been good on the circle. I think I still would be good on the circle. Who? Yeah. Who, funny. What would be the alias you'd play? My friend Bram. Nice. Yeah. Bram, right. you know, Bram's yeah, a good looking yeah, yeah. dude. Be, and you know enough about him. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. I don't know. He's got some good shirtless pics. Like, it's the, <laughs> the, the, the part of the show. You guys wouldn't understand. <laughs> I gotta watch it again. I haven't kept up with it. You're good. Kenny, you wanna, we, we can lastly dive into Kenny's corner. Ooh. Sure. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I usually tee off this Kenny's corner with a few clips of things that I found on the internet to be pretty interesting. All right. Um, to start us off, we've already seen the waiter race, but this is a close second. There's apparently a rival. No, oh, I got oh, deleted. Yeah. Kenny's corner oh, off to oh, him. Oh, guys, oh. that is the conclusion of Kenny's corner. <laughs> Wait, Thank you not, so much. Let's do Gypsy Rose. Gypsy Rose. All right, we'll do. G- I actually, you put this in here, so I don't know anything about this, but oh, no. um, well, you know the whole saga with Gypsy yeah, Rose. Yeah, but I, what's the most recent update? So Gypsy Rose was convicted of murdering her mother, who was in capturing her for. Uh, what was what's like the kind of diagnosis of like why she did or like uh the was she syndrome schizophrenic? No, like oh. when you encapture your daughter. Like, no. Yeah. Kind oh, of a, oh, yeah. like entrapment. Yeah. Oh. She basically said her daughter was sick her entire yeah, life yeah, and got yeah. like and oh. she wasn't like Munchausen's. Yes, yes. Yeah, Thank by you, proxy. Grace. Yeah. Grace part two with the Hell yeah, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She like made her, told her that she was sick, told the world that she was sick. They got all of this like media recognition, like got Disney f- tickets, like got all of this stuff. And then, yeah. Yeah. So she killed her mom after Well, she that. hired, yeah, she had a boyfriend. Oh, yes, that's right. She right. met this guy online and then got him to kill her mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they didn't end up marrying that guy, right? She married someone else. Yeah. Well, she's with. Is that her husband? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 I haven't. Ca- I know there's a huge frenzy, and she's been like uh, on TikTok like crazy yeah. lately. But I haven't uh, kept up entirely. Well, anyways, she just got separated from <gasps> her could be husband or fiance, something like that. But she had a funny uh, Instagram comment of people hating on her husband and yeah. saying that basically, in summary of that long paragraph, the D is good. The D yeah. is fire. The, the D, D is, is fire. fire. She said they're just jealous. Yeah. But the haters are just jealous because his D is fire. <laughs> and it's hot girl summer. Yeah. Dude. So, How else yeah. do you shut down haters, I guess? <laughs> well, she said the D is good. That's the, good. The D is yeah. great. But now she's back on the market. Whoa. I thought that her whole saga of just like jumping into the media world was just like a bold move on her part. Like just yeah. getting out of jail and then just jumping on like she like had like basically TMZ just following her around like everywhere she went, which I thought was just like a very uh, eye opening thing to just come from like no phone, no social media, no nothing, basically yeah. for a long period of jail time to just jumping right back into like TikTok stardom, which is yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> very bizarre and maybe is um, a sign of culturally like Mm -hmm. (laughs) we're a little fucked up yeah i don't know everyone jumped on i know their interest of her which just like puts her in the algorithm and pushes all of that content to the top so uh yeah it's strange to me yeah that's yeah. what we need for the new channel. We need a murder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> dude. yes. But you know yeah. what's also strange? Like in the reality TV of it all too, like Bravo uh, has had now two housewives that have gone to jail 
Uh, and one of right. them, Jen Shaw, currently. Do you watch Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? That's a good I do. one. That's the best one. Yes. Because that's the only one where they openly discuss religion, religious trauma. Yep. And they're, yeah. On no other franchise do they do it. And it's really fascinating. Close second and is also, Potomac. Oh, but Tommy's got a bad season this season. Oh, really? I fell off from watching it. Well, it started off strong. Yeah, but yeah, then, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think after, uh, I don't know, it, 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 they're trying to stretch the storylines out yeah. pretty hardcore. But yeah. Yeah, but Jen Shaw on Salt Lake City went to jail uh, for like six years or something Damn. now, currently. And she's like in the same jail as Elizabeth Holmes. And there's Dude, like whoa. photos of them like in the courtyard together. Whoa, that's yeah. fucking sick. So it's like, What's the reality show? Like, what am I watching here? Is this here? a Utah jail? I'm not sure. I, th I thought it was in Texas, maybe, but I'm not entirely sure. Say. That'd be so tight if you jail like some so sick. Yeah, but a Utah, <laughs> Utah jail, you would assume is just like, you know, white woman just yeah. chilling, you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hanging out with Martha Stewart. Yeah, just being Mormon, you <laughs> yeah. know, but it sounded hardcore. Damn. Wild. Well, Grace Helbig, go ahead. Are can I save Kenny's off? corner with one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Kenny, you better fuck it. I'm on the comeback trail. <laughs> This better this be a live me. link. It this better be, <laughs> <laughs> better be this real. This is going to save everything, guys, because 7 right. Eleven is selling hot dog water. Oh, wow. Check Kenny's Corner out. is safe. What? Not only is it hot dog water, <laughs> it's sparkling. Wait, is oh, this. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. What? What? <laughs> uh, it says, however, the announcement of further details on April 1st have some fans thinking. Oh no, Kenny's oh. corner's off again. Oh, Kenny, Wait, this is what? an April Fool's no, joke. So this thing. is an April Fool's joke. <laughs> no, Kenny. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Fuck it, I'm done. Dude, I'm done. I would have had it. I would have drank it. Really? Yeah, I, I want a glizzy it. water. I would try it. Would you try it, Grace? A little Hot salty? dog water. Hot dog water sparkled. No, I I honor my body now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sparkly, mm. bubbly hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Damn that segment! Uh, I think we got to cancel it. I now. think that was Kenny no, Scores over. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> great. I think you should continue to bring broken links and <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> fake news corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you have to guess what's real, yeah. what's legit. <laughs> well. Thank you, Grace, yes, for thank coming you guys. on. Yeah, yeah, our thank you so much. First episode on the new channel. Yeah, uh, Grace, any plugs you would wish to give out? Um, you can <laughs> check out May Marie Nights podcast. Uh, let's make it weird every Wednesday and Friday over on our YouTube channel, and I'm just at Grace Helbig on all social platforms. Oh yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Congrats to you guys, wow. and uh, <laughs> congrats on the continuous weirdness that cancer gifts us yep. with. Thank but you. <laughs> glad to yep. see you guys out here thriving. <laughs> Appreciate you. Grace, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, make sure to check out This Might Get Weird yeah. at Grace's yep. YouTube channel, TikTok. Yeah. Yep. Her Vine oh, account. Her Vine account's coming back. Her Vine's coming back. Platform. She's also going to be on the next season of Survivor. Yeah. 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 That's the official. Yeah. Hell yeah. Look out for that ladder. Yeah. <laughs> Please sub, guys. Peace and blessings and goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>